Welcome back. Today, I wanted to talk about DMT, the pineal gland, and your brain. Here we have the medulla oblongata. You go, oh, now I get it. And you strain the back of your neck. That is that point that you're straining to is the medulla oblongata. That's very important to understand. And right on top of that is the thalamus. And above that is the midbrain. And above that is the fornix. And to the back of all of those, uh, above and to the back, is the pineal gland. And it's one of the most interesting pieces in the entire brain. The thing about the pineal gland is that everybody comes to it. Everybody notices the pineal gland. Descartes was looking for the soul, and he, in looking at the brain, realized that there were two halves. And so he said, he reasoned that there are always two halves. Even the pituitary gland has two halves. There are two orb-like halves. So everywhere we see this division inside of the brain. And in looking at the pineal gland, it is the only piece of the brain which is one. And Descartes reasoned that this must be the seat of the soul because it's the only one that was one. Everything else is two. Carl Jung, in researching brain injury and brain psychosis, he reasoned the very same thing, that the pineal gland must be the seat of the soul. In the Bible, Jacob takes all of his belongings and puts it on the other side of the river. And then he crosses over. He crosses over and wrestles with an angel. And afterwards, he meets God face to face and calls that place pineal. Yoga talks about the thousand petaled lotus. And this is separate from the chakras in the body. There are six chakras, and the thousand petaled lotus is not a chakra, it is separate. And so Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, This body only is Kurukshetra. That is, repetitive actions of meditation or pranayama should only take place below the medulla oblongata. Everything else is a result. It's an end result. It's not to be affected directly over and over and over again using a technique like Kriya Yoga. So if you will look at the pine yoga, it looks like a pine cone, which has been closed, closed down. And it looks very much like a lotus, which is about to open. You can see this pine cone represented around the world. So we have the thousand petal lotus. We have the, the staff of Dionysus, which is one of my favorites. So if you look at the logo on this channel and you see the staff, the top of the staff has a pine cone. That's for the pineal gland. So the pineal gland is very important. And, you know, a lot of meditators would like to see light in meditation. And the beautiful thing about seeing light in meditation is that it gives you a very solid experience that what you're doing is real, that the, ex the internal experience is valid, that it's real, that this is a real place. And when that enters strongly into your mind, it can help to precipitate a disidentification process so that your ego becomes a little loose around you for some time and that will enable you to have deeper experiences. So it isn't so much seeing the light which is so important in and of itself, it's what it gives you which is so important. If it were just seeing light that meditation was all about, it would be fairly short-sighted. It's the disidentification that it can give you and the validation to your meditative experience. And those things can help lift you up 
into a suspended experience of bliss and calm and peace. That's what we really want in meditation. That's the states that we're looking for, to spend more and more time in that lifted and blissful state where we can rest and regather to the soul. Now, a lot of people have not seen light and they'd like to see light. And I give a lot of talks about doing that. One of the things that I mentioned is, you know, put your, put your hand on a nice white wall. This is, an, this is an, an ideal wall. But if you could put your hand on a nice white wall and dilate your eyes so that you see a second image, that dilation of the eyes, first of all, is very important because it puts you into spatial the spatial neurological driver. And it also will enable you to see a second class of light. And that's very important if you want to see the spiritual light or the spiritual eye. The other thing that you can do, a lot of us have been drinking our water our whole lives that has fluoride in it. Um, we use toothpaste that uses fluoride in several different ways. We've allowed fluoride to come into our bodies. And the thing about these kinds of chemicals is that they're very hard to get out once they're in the body. And there are several ways that we can do this. And I'd like to introduce some of those ways. One way to decalcify the pineal gland is to take some borax salts, some natural borax salts, but it just tastes awful. It just, it's just horrible. And so to get yourself to do that every day, it's a bit difficult. It's okay, but it's, it's a bit difficult. So I'd like to introduce you my favorite way. And this comes from an article that came out uh, that I became aware of not too long ago. The article explains that tamarind will bind with the fluoride in your bones. That means it, the tamarind goes through the body. It gloms on with the fluoride that's inside of your bones and now the body has a way to get rid of both it just flushes out the tamarind with the fluoride so it's really and when we say your bones we also mean your skull so now you're decalcifying your entire brain you're getting the fluoride out of your whole skull, your whole body. It's really amazing. So um, this is what I'm drinking. I drink about uh, a fourth of a cup each day. And in about, my, my goal is to get through the whole thing in one month. So this is my, uh, you can see I've been drinking it uh, for about almost half a month now. This is my second one and what I've noticed is that I'm seeing more light. So I saw light before. I'm actually experiencing a perceptible increase in light. So I wanted to share this with you guys. I'm going to have the link for this one below on Amazon. I really like it. Um, I wouldn't trust every single brand, but I really like this one. So, and I turned. I, I turned a very dear friend of mine onto this as well. He's been drinking it for about half a month. He just started having some very interesting experiences in meditation. Uh, not mine to tell you, but uh, some very uh, interesting developments. It, it seems that he's actually feeling his pineal gland, which is something new for him, in, in a new kind of way. So very, very interesting. Uh, so I'm going to link that below, and, and I definitely recommend it. You have to take it every day. Just put like a fourth of a cup in a glass of water and, and, and imagine that you're going to try and get through this whole thing in one month. It's not that hard. It tastes pretty good. It's kind of a sour, sweet taste. Uh, maybe you won't like it. I hope you do. And what's so interesting is that this is a, this is, I don't know if it's a North Indian, but this is a South Indian staple. I was talking with an advanced yogi. I mentioned this to him and he said, oh my goodness, that's my whole diet. I, I eat that every day. <laughs> so very interesting. It's the pineal gland that creates DMT and it's the DMT 
that will allow you to see light. It's also the pineal gland that creates melatonin, which allows us to sleep deeply at night. So if you're taking this, you might notice that you start to sleep better at night. And that is wonderful. We want that deep, restful sleep at night. That, in turn, will help our meditations to become deeper as well. And when the body has enough melatonin and it has enough experience of, of a dark setting, it will begin to produce DMT. And that's what allows us to see the light. So what is the solution? Tamarind purity. <laughs> it's really good. So I hope you'll give that a try. I hope this little video was valuable for you. If it was, click that bell down there, and I'll see you guys next time.